life who are able to experience the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living such as this. Amen. I want you all to have uh, an expectancy this morning. Um, God only moves at the rate at which we expect him to move. Uh, he's, uh, he's as close as we desire him to be. He tells, Bible tells us that when we draw near to him, he draws near to us. So that means that as close, uh, closer, as close as we get, can get to God, the closest he can get to us. So in short, we're on limitation, we're on barrier to what God is capable of doing. Uh, as it is custom in this house, um, for what uh, his word uh, finds his place in. Okay, let's just go to the first slide there. Um, I think it should be. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, Luke chapter 14, verse 16 to 24. Want to read Luke chapter 14, verse 16 to 24. And the Bible says, um, the Bible says, the first one, please, you have moved too quickly. Yes. Verse, uh, hey. A certain man gave a great supper and invited many. And he sent his servants um, at supper time to say, Come. For all the things already, <laughs> you have no neighbor. <laughs> Look for a <your> neighbor. <laughs> Next slide, please. Let's move with me. Yeah. But they were all with one accord. But they, with, uh, they all in one accord began to make excuses. Um, the first one said to him, "And see it, I ask you to have me excused." Let's go next. Yeah. And another said, "I have bought five yokes of oxen." And I'm going to test them. I ask you to have to. Uh, the verse continues to say, "So the servants came and reported these things to the to, to his master. Then his master of the house began uh, being angry, said to his servants, "Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in here." And the servant said, "Master, it is done as you have commanded, and there is still room." be filled for I say to you that none of those men who were invited shall test my supper Father thank you for your word this morning we pray may give us our understanding that this meal the text that we have today oh God may speak to us so Lord may you speak uh, for your servants to hearing in Jesus mighty name we prayed amen and amen before you take your seats I want you to turn to your neighbor once more and, and say no more excuses <laughs> Go to, to the third count, amen. 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 Make sure your joy is not determined by the sunshine. I always say in this house, sometimes when the sun is not out, even your heart is not out. <laughs> but I've said it again. Today is the only day of this year. It won't come back again. So you don't have one chance to take it. So it's better to do it right. All right. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm -hmm. My title, say, my title of my sermon today is No More Excuses. Um, no More Excuses. And we join this story here of Jesus Christ. Mm, he was invited to a uh, supper by the, by the Pharisees. All right? Um, so, what happens... Um, at that supper in Luke chapter 14, is that he begins to notice certain things going around around him, and he begins to address those things. Jesus Christ um, had a habit of healing people, all right, and he's still in that habit today. He still heals people. Uh, so what happens in Luke chapter 14 is that the the Pharisees have invited him for supper, Sabbath, and they've staged a lame man there, seeing what's going to do to that lame man, and him being Jesus. As usual, he heals that man. And because of knowing what they were thinking, he asked, was it wrong that this man is healed on the Sabbath? You know, and further, he goes on to talk about, uh, he goes on to talk about uh, uh, how people should behave when, they are, when they've been invited to a gathering. And uh, he begins to talk about humility. And he, 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 he speaks to the Pharisees there about how it's important that you don't begin to fight for seats at the high table because you think that you're important. Because it can happen that someone who's more important than you comes in. And if you're seated at a high seat, the host of that, uh, of that dinner, of that fast, will ask you to move from where, from where you found yourself and to be very, very embarrassing. Therefore, Jesus Christ encourages 
the people there he tells them that if you're going to be if you want if you if you if you if you want if you want to be the most important person take the lowest place because if you take the lowest place and your host sees that you who's on a high place at the lowest place when everyone else is seated he's going to ask you to come to sit in the front and there he's going to honor you in the in the sight of everyone and because they're talking about uh, because they're talking about uh, food and supper and all these things just Christ you know just Christ is very very uh, uh, skillful in how he's able to bring in bring in the kingdom of, of, of heaven and he's in any slight conversation so you from food he begins to talk about the 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 the, 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 the other people call it the messianic uh, a dinner the the, the kind of uh, a dinner that the Lord is going to prepare for those that believe in him and he gives this uh, parable which we've just read together so no more excuses all right so the word of I have today is a bit difficult for me to deliver but I pray the Lord is going to give me strength that I'm able to deliver this word that he has for us today an event to event all right and it's so exciting if it's a wedding you're looking forward to the meals if it's a wedding you're looking forward you've been you have not been invited to a, 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 a party which everyone else has been invited to you're like hey, how come i didn't know about it? <laughs> i think it's very very painful i remember when i was preparing for my wedding um that's 2008 uh, 2018 before you think i don't age <laughs> 2018 so we're turning we're turning quite we're turning 24 for this this week um yeah four years so 2018 got married but Many people know that the hardest part of a wedding is the guest list. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and people in church are laughing now because they know uh, when you have an event like a wedding, you remember everybody. You remember your, your, your Sunday school teacher, your primary school teacher. All those that meant something to you. <laughs> but for me, <laughs> my, my colleague may, helped me in establishing who to invite for my wedding. Not my guest list was very very small. You know, we all, I had 50 people on my side and 50 on my wife's side, and um, for that time it was a very very small number. Now it's normal because of COVID, but that time it was a very very small number, you know. But what what were we able to afford, you know? So I had 100 guests, and the most difficult part of that was the guest list. You know how it is sometimes trying to invite people. I think the battery is almost dying in this one. Can you just give me another one? Um, you know how it is when you're inviting for, for a wedding or wait, inviting people for uh, an event that you have um, all right, thanks that you have prepared you're conscious about transport you know how this person, that person is going to come how they behave you know, all these things determine whether the person is, is rightly um, fit for that event or not regardless of how, regardless of how close they are some people can be close to you. I know all of us have such individuals where you're thinking that when I'm staying right to this one, I have to send them transport and I also have to prepare their clothes and also think about how they're going to go back, you know. So you find most people who are in that category don't even make it to such events because <laughs> they don't have transport. You have to think about where they're going to sleep. You have to think about all these things, you know. But the, the host in this story which you read was expecting many guests. Amen was expecting many guests. What we notice in verse, um, 15, or verse 16 is that, um, you know, in this time, there was no, like, uh, technology. I don't know, let me just send emails or WhatsApps, you know. So before the event actually happens, the host, maybe days before, weeks before, would let them know, you know, that, oh, there will be this kind of event, you know, please get ready. And what happens in this story is that he sent out the first invitation and people accepted that invitation. Unfortunately, when the food was now ready, and he stood the servant talk, you know, let's stay invited and to go go around and make sure those people come. The people that were that the the, 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 the master or the, the, the host was expecting declined that that meeting with various excuses. So this was not a random, a random, uh, a random invitation to this feast, all right? He had sent people before. To let them know on this particular date or this, when these things are ready, we're going to call you so that you can come and eat, all right? But what happens here is that even when the 
the the the the the the the the the the host prepares the meal he has told the people already that there's a meal they begin to decline so in verse 17 we're ready to get i said come now all things are ready because we know that the desire of the host the desire of the host is that the house would be full the desire of the host is that the house will be filled and that's the desire the lord has for every everybody that his house will be filled so it's a picture of God's heart and how God um, desires that his house will be, be filled. Now, Jesus, being who he was, took the, 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 the guests who were at that uh, particular Pharisee meeting, the one he was uh, attending, a list of the excuses that these people made. Luke chapter 14, verse 18 and 20. Bible says, but with one accord began to make excuses. The first one said, I have bought a piece of ground or a piece of land and I must go to see it. Uh, but what we know is that whenever someone is making an investment of a house, making an investment of property or making an investment of where they're going to stay, before you make any payment, all right, you have to make sure you know it is, right? We just don't go and uh, say that no uh, uh, That's foolishness. Because I know in Kabul there's some. In the hearing, I don't think it was making sense. I don't think he knew that what he was saying was not making sense to the hearer. You know, you know. I don't think he knew it was not making sense to the hearer. You know, he said I bought land. Uh, and I have to go see it. So I'm asking if I don't, I don't come. That particular event. So he made a blind investment. He made a foolish, we can assume he made a foolish investment because no one makes such an investment of such kind of excuse that we hear this one gave. In verse 19, you know, the same, no problem, like, hey, if you want to buy a car, first one, make sure, make sure the, the car is in good condition before you make any payment. Time, I imagine them taking the oxen to, to the field, you know, maybe trying to see whether they can carry something, if you can till the land before making the investment. But even this man, like the first, not hearing what he was, not listening to what he was saying, or how truthful what this man was, was saying. And the last one said that he was married. And he couldn't come. What we know during this time is that um, in, in, in the, uh, um, the laws of Moses, they were not allowed, it was okay. In fact, not allowed for him to go to war. Go home for one, 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 year, one year before I can go anywhere else. But it was not worth He was probably very bored. And it would have been amazing for him to take his wife to that feast. Right? But his excuse was that uh uh-uh. uh. In fact, even give an excuse. You just told the host, told the servant that he's assuming that, that they will. Well, just assume that, ah, it's, it's expected. I won't come because it's expected. I just, I just bought land. I just got myself uh, some uh, car. Oh. Attitude that these guests had concerning their host. Because excuses, um, whatever we give an excuse to, Excuses reveal our assessment of the value of the world, where our love is, where our worth is. And, it's, and in this story talks Christ, you know. So excuses not to follow Christ, or excuses not to be where he wants you to be, uh, reveals our assessment, our own assessment of who, of, the, of Jesus. Real, if really and truly he is God and the son of God, you would not. So we can say that these three people, these three examples, not value their invitation. Um, this is very, very important because sometimes the way we react, the way we behave in church, or the way we take the things of the faith, um, I, I know you've heard this before, you know. Um, uh, don't judge me. Whenever, when it comes to uh, when someone you're reprimanding somebody or showing them the right thing, they don't judge me. You think you're perfect. 
you know. It's me and Jesus, my personal savior. Mm. And it's true. Whenever God saves us, he didn't, he didn't, when he saves us, whenever he calls us, it's not a conference call, right? When God calls us, he calls us as, as individuals, all right? Calls us as individuals and we accept him in our heart, all right? But when you are sick, your heart won't visit you, okay? Sometimes you can even say, I'm there in spirit, okay? Spirit is, right? If you can't make it, if really and truly your spirit is there, there should be some form of contribution or that comm- some commitment that you've made to what you might as well be in spirit so that you can be able to uh, find your way there. But that's not the way God uh, has designed our faith. Whenever he, we are brought into the faith, as much as it serves us as individuals, we are brought into community with other believers. Your, 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 your Spiritual maturity, I always said this during a leadership meeting. It means that you're making your private work. It means that you're making a relationship with God. But these private commitments are expressed with other believers. Right? So, um, if, 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 if by any chance you find that you, 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 you try to, to give excuse whenever a, a call is made for you by the Lord... Um, it's going to reveal how long you've been in the faith. It has everything to do with what you're making, even as much as you are growing in your, in, your, in your walk with the Lord. Many people change in age, but they don't grow in their spirit to, to the faith. Chapter 14, verse 21. The servant comes back with uh, a response from the people that he invited and offering dishes. There was no chefing dishes. You know those chefing dishes where you, where there's like a, come a small flame at the bottom, you know, to keep the food hot. <laughs> In this time, that was not there. <laughs> it is prepared and you eat. If you don't come, it spoils, you know? And the master was angry because these people had made the commitment. They said, you're going to come, but they did not show every right to be angry with uh, his, his guests who did not come back. But we see him saying here, you know, say, go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring them here. So, and that's how the master is, as he relates, with us, whether you're a believer or not, okay? If you deny his, um, his, his invitation, the feast will still continue. But you won't be there. <laughs> Other people will be there. And you look at the kind of people that uh, just probably had of knowing how to, to behave or cultured around that, 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 that they went to court because those that were cultured, those had table manners, were not uh, available. And, and, and I pray that you won't be substituted for, for, for somebody else when the invitation comes. <laughs> God in his divine wisdom, uh, he still calls us and he beckons us to come. But as much as we, um, that he constantly stands at the door of our hearts to knock, we have to know that his invitation is time-bound. There's a time to that invitation. The invitation that the Lord has made for us is, is bound by time. So he begins to call out different kind of individuals. All right? One here may be thirsty and cried out, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me. So he's calling the weak and the burden. He's calling the thirsty. Not only that, but he's also calling the poor. And many people fit in this category. Maybe weak and heavy left to the table because he's saying that if you're poor, in Isaiah chapter 55 verse 1, um, that everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. If you have no money, come, let's eat. Yes, come, buy wine and, and milk without money and without price. So just presents to us that whatever excuse such may have to come to the faith, he's still inviting you to come, all right? It depends, it, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what, what, what currently, uh, 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 first thing that comes to mind when people come, think of you. Just Christ is calling everybody to come to the feast, amen? The weak and the burden, the thirsty, the poor. This kind of poor is calling, the weak, the lame, you know? And... Um, Invite those that we know will be beneficial to us. But just Christ's invitation 
to the faith and God's invitation to the faith, all right, it's not one which is uh, uh, determined on whether you're able to pay back or not. Of people, Jesus Christ is calling. He calls the weak because they know that he can be their strength. He calls the thirsty because they know that he's able to provide, he's able to quench that thirst. He's calling the poor because he knows that in them, even if they're poor, ye can be made rich by him. So even though you may have genuine excuses, genuine excuses like you're thirsty, uh, I'm poor, called, has called you too. What is true about invitations is this. Just because you said that you, 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 just because you received the card, all right, does not necessarily mean that you make the invitation. Even if you say that I'm going to come, if you didn't show up, if you don't show up, okay? Maybe they didn't honor that, that invitation. And many people are, are, are on the stage where they've heard the gospel message, they've heard it over and over and over and over and over and over again. Because they've heard it over and over and over and over again. In economics, they say, uh, the law of uh, 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 the law of marginal utility states that the more and more you have of a product, the more and more um, uh, less value you get. If you smell it, it won't excite you, right? And many people have come to the fate, to the point where over and over and over and over and over again, all right, to the point that even it's calling you, you're not moved anymore. But today the warning is, even as much. As God is full of love and full of mercy, his invitation is time, it's time bound. I, I stand at the door of your heart and knock. He won't go and stand at the door of your heart and knock forever. The time is moving. Or, or, or sin, okay, can be uh, a state of heart, certain habits that constantly make you turn away, you know. Or maybe certain loves, even. Certain loves where you know, I know I have to be where God is asking me to be, but I cannot be there because teaching to child Oasha, you know. I can't afford to give up this, 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 this habit. It can be anything. It can be alcohol. It can be, it can, it can be pornography. It can be masturbation. Anything. It can be all these things, you know, that pull us away from that invitation that the Lord has for us. But in my hearing, God's invitation is, is, is time-bound. So you think it's is there forever. But the Bible tells us it's going to come like a thief in the night. Uh, uh, these are the last days. But now it's been last years, and you're thinking to be like that forever. The Lord's invitation is time bound. So it has to be a sense of agency, even as we are talking about the plug and making sure, but you have no control. That's the same way the invitation of the Lord. Uh, so I looked up 14, verse 22. He says, And the servant said, Master, it's done as you come out. So in the same way he made two invitations and, and who had all this, the, the wealthy people who refused to go before, he makes the same invitation twice. He tells them, go back where you went, just in case uh, those that have invited, uh, where, f- just in case there are more people in the same places that you, you had passed before, you know. And the desire is that his house may be, may be filled. So, <laughs> to be empty, he wants his house to be full. So even as you are, are planning on our evangelism this week, we won't look at the face, okay? We won't look at the car that they drive. Okay, we won't look at how their outward appearance is, but we won't look at them through the eyes of Jesus, saying whether they are they are thirsty. You know, I cannot provide solution, but I know who can provide that solution. That's what it means when you're talking about uh, a plug and, and and uploading people and, and and evangelism. You're pointing them towards Jesus, not to yourself, not to the man of God, not to church. You're making you're glorifying Jesus Christ. As, 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 as the solution and God as the reward by Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, accepting God's invitation is being found at the table. That's what accepting God's invitation means. Being found at the table. So, are you found at the table this morning? Are you found where God wants you to be? God's instruction for us um, usually is not, is not easy. God's instruction for us and what he demands us to do requires him to fulfill that thing that he wants us to do. In our own strength, it's not possible. So when God is calling out to you, like he's calling out to you this morning, are you going to be found at the table? Are you just going to sing, Awen, there is Sunday Munshila. But are you found at the table? Are you found? My last point is, 
abused mercy tends wrath. So we are currently in a time where the mercy of God is available for everyone. We are currently at a time where, 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 where grace is available for everyone. We are currently at a time where invitation is open to everybody. But hearing is not enough. Being found at the table is, 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 the, is the evidence that you have received that invitation. Amen. So whatever you have to do, make it, make it, make it, make it your, your goal this year. You know, that wherever God is being found, be found there as well. Wherever God is meeting his people, be there as well. There's no Christianity in isolation. We may be saved as individuals, but we are born into a community. And it's in a community where we are able to, 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 to have checks and balances. The Bible tells us that you cannot judge those that are not saved. All right? But um, those that are in the faith, those that are in the sheepfold, we know how to behave. All right? But when someone comes in and they don't know how, they don't know how to behave like the way those people came in from the streets, <laughs> you know, we won't turn our back away from them. We'll make sure that they continue to abide, that they continue to be found at the table, at the master's table, so that as they eat the master's table, they can be changed and transformed. And this word is also true for you because the, 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 what this story presents, the, 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 the first crowd uh, are people who are expecting the Messiah, expecting uh, salvation. Even before salvation came, they were earnestly waiting for salvation to come. They were earnestly waiting for God to come. But when God came through Jesus Christ, that particular community, the Jewish community, did not deny him because he didn't come in the way that they expected him to come. And he came still. He still came. He still came, you know? He still came. And us who were in the streets, us who had no entry through Jesus Christ to be found at the table that other people didn't want to be found in. The Bible tells us of the five virgins, the five uh, uh, wives and the, f- at, um, and the five foolish virgins. All of them, like we are here waiting for the Messiah to come. All of us here are waiting for, 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 for salvation, for Jesus Christ to come in, you know. But unfortunately for, the, for, the, for, for those uh, five uh, uh, virgins, who are who are foolish they ran out of oil you know they knew they had to have oil but they ran out of oil and they went to buy oil when they came back they found that there was no the gates were were, were closed and there was no access to the to the groom um and that can happen in our day as well let me end by telling you a story the first time ben so ben heard the gospel at 19 years old but it took him 15 years um, before he could go back, before he could accept that invitation. Many of his life, you know, maybe bought land, okay, maybe got just got... 15 years later, I think he was 35, uh, he, he found himself in church. And whilst he was in church, the preacher preached and preached, preached. Not the way I preach, just chilled like he said, I'm just talking. <laughs> <laughs> that one he preached and preached and preached and preached. <laughs> wiped, wiped the sweat, you know. But our dear Ben didn't even shout amen. In fact, he didn't even nod. Nothing. Continued preaching. He preached, preached, and gave a water call. All the ones received Christ, please stand up to your feet and, you know. But Ben, ben unfortunately, uh, lift up his hand or, or do any movement. He was just. You know, like he's not in the room. And the reason why he was not in the room, he could not uh, uh, give any reaction to that powerful sermon because Ben was dead. He was in the coffin. All right? <laughs> Wondering. I thought maybe he was asleep. He was on WhatsApp. You know, he was dead. He was in the coffin. So he could know. His time was over. His time was up. So had he gone, made a commitment 15 years earlier, I didn't even steal. He was still going to be found, have an opportunity to be, to be, uh, well, be, be at the table. You know, so my 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 question for us this morning is God's invitation to his table is time bound. Even when you think you're saving time, you're not even saving time, time didn't wait for you. You know, Bible tells us it's going to come like a thief in the night. We have control from I don't know. The more and more we postponed our commitment to the faith. The less faith uh, already made, 
God is one who makes and qualifies all that he calls the table. All right? So you may come lame, you may come thirsty, you may come, you know, you may come uh, 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 weak and heavy laden, you know. But you know, as you are at the table, with no excuse, you'll be transformed. The more we behold God, the more we look at God, the more and more transform to him. So if what we've come for to do, to do this Sunday is important to you, if really and truly it's important to you, you have to make a commitment. Make a commitment today. You have to make a commitment today. It's many things, many excuses that, you know. Maybe before, the reason why you were here, you wanted a spouse, but now that you're married, you're not here anymore. Maybe the reason why you're, you're here, because you wanted a job, you know. But now, your you're inefficiency at your job, your inefficiency at your workplace, makes you stay longer than necessary. The work that you are able to do in two days, you do in four days. And because you, you have to do in four days, you have, to cover, you have to cover for it on Saturday and Sunday. Therefore, you can't be found here because you're working. Working because of your inefficiency. The Lord is asking you to be at the table. That's where God expects you to be. That's where you're transformed. Listen, something about church, it's not about even feeling the pews. It's, it's, it's a Christian value. It's a Christian principle. You cannot grow in isolation. You cannot grow. This thing cannot happen. In, you cannot work in isolation. It's a lie. Many stories, I think the first time I preached uh, on the plaque series, we learned about Cornelius. You know, Cornelius saw God himself. God come and pr- 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 pronounce the blessing on him. So many things can happen in isolation and you're thinking everything's going on well. You know, but your strength is in when you're in community. Your strength is when you're in community. All right? God had, I'm there in the spirit. Whenever you're in crisis, you might as well be in the spirit. You know? <laughs> I'm sorry, but this is what it is. You might as well be in the spirit, but your security is when you're in the, in the, in, in, in the sheep fold. Your security is when you're, when you're in the house. Make it your, your, your personal uh, uh, agenda this year. But even as we're talking about positional possessions that you have found in the house, the Bible tells us that on Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. There shall be healing, holiness, right? And the house of Jacob. So his house there shall possess the possession. You don't possess it home. You benefit from the covering of the house. You benefit from, from, from time bound. Um, this house. My father is an orphan. He was in, the reason why he's an orphan is the sixth this year. And his parents have passed away. Those excuses that you might be giving, that seem important to you, you know, mm. we understand. But they are time bound. Okay? They are time bound. And the Lord is calling us to be at the, to be at the table today. Therefore, um, there has to be fire on your altar. He has called you to pray. You have to be found where there's prayer. He's called you to be in community. You have to be in a place where you feel in community. If it's not here, find a place where you're in community so that you can be able to, 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 to pray. Lord, purify my heart. Change my commitment levels in the mighty name of Jesus. I know who you are and your value, but I've not demonstrated your value, you know, in my actions. I've had excuses, but today my excuses end in the mighty name of Jesus. Open up mouth and pray. Jatarabaya. It's going to change you, transform you. It's going to give you a f- on this earth. In the name of Jesus Christ. What he's going to ask of you won't be, won't be easy. That's why you need him. That's why he's God. If it was easy, you would not need him. So the more difficult the decision is, do it with no excuses. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. which many people may have uh, just skimmed off. It ends with, with, with a pronouncement. The guest ends with a, with a pronouncement. Now listen to this. In verse 24, who were invited shall eat my supper. It's talking about those that were invited first and refused the invitation. You eat the supper. So there's time bound there. Purify my heart. And precious silver purify my heart. Let it be as gold. Pure glorify 
minus my heart's one desire holy set apart for you my master set apart for you lord it used to be i holy set apart set apart for you who my master i'm ready to do Refine us, refine my heart's one desire is to be, is to be holy, holy, set apart, set apart. Apart from my master, my master, I'm ready to do your. Make it your prayer. I'm ready to do your will. Ready. Rada ba shala la ba ya. Make it your prayer today. I don't know what your excuse might might have been, but there's no more excuses. Da. Ready be shaya. Say, we, we thank you, God, for being the, 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 your pref- we, we may find we may find ourselves in, in, in your preferred future for our lives. In, in Jesus' name. Alright, can you can maybe you can just take a few seats.